Well, hello and welcome to the Tammy Hudson Pillar podcast. I'm really excited to share with you part two of a series with a guest of mine in the studio, Gina Pastore. I have to say right now, if you've stumbled upon this YouTube or even this podcast, stop right now and go back and listen to part one. You have to hear the heart of Gina Pastore and all that God has brought her through in the death of her beloved husband that many of us know, not only as a great Cincinnati Reds pitcher, but Frank Pastore and the thing... Uh, Frank Pastore show on KKLA, great man of God. And I want you to hear her heart. So I really want to set up your story, Gina. So I'm going to ask you all to go back and pick that up. But I, I do want to start here. There's so much more of the story. And obviously you can't tell it all because then, well, what would be the need of buying the book? <laughs> so I want to set this up to where you really do. You know, there's something about picking up a book and walking through page by page. It's, yeah. it's literally, Gina, touching. You've got great photos in here, but... It's touching a story of tragedy. Yes. And it's able for me, I mean, not that I love people's pain and tragedy, but it helps me realize I'm not the only one that goes through difficulty. Right. And you literally have been able to exactly what this says, picking up my shattered pieces. Yes. And so many people sit uh, in their pain and their suffering and their sorrow, and they leave this life angry and bitter. Yeah. But you have picked up your pieces and yes. you've done something with them. Uh, something we say here, if you've been a part of Women of Influence, is many of us wear our little puzzle piece necklaces. I think you can see them behind me on our Story Club bags. You know, because God gave me a vision. I want to set this up real quick before we go into your story. I was actually in Kansas City at IHOP, mm-hmm. uh, International House of Prayer, not Pancakes. Oh. Um, and I was I doing kind of, of it, right, yes. right? It's a great <laughs> prayer ministry. And I had what I call an open vision. I had never mm-hmm. had anything like this before. But I was sitting at a table, I'm watching myself in this vision, and I'm sitting at a table, and there were puzzle pieces all over this table. Mm -hmm. And I begin to put these puzzle pieces together. Mm -hmm. And I looked over at the box to see what the picture looks like. That's how you put together a picture, right? A puzzle. And it was white. Wow. And the Holy Spirit vividly said to me, I'm not going to show you the picture or else you'll try to put the pieces Mm -hmm. together. Interesting. I'm bringing the puzzle pieces together one by one. And I say that to you as well as those listening, because all of our life is a puzzle piece. Every day is a piece of the puzzle. Every tragedy, every victory, every child, every part is a piece of the puzzle. And some of them are shattered pieces. Right. Sometimes a picture does not look like what we thought it would. And for you, the morning that Frank got on his motorcycle, went into work, Mm -hmm. the Frank Pastore show, we all are glued to it a couple hours every night. You never anticipated the phone call that you were going to get that night. No. And a- actually, I didn't end up getting a phone call. He didn't. He always got home at 8 o'clock. So I had dinner ready because one of the last things he said to me that morning is, make sure you have um, dinner ready. It's Monday night football. And he was really excited mm. for Monday night football. So I did. 8 o'clock comes. I'm thinking, oh, he's going to be here any minute. He wasn't. 8.30 comes. Hmm. I start calling him. I just keep getting his answering machine. And my husband always called me if he was going to be late, which he rarely was. So by nine, by 8.45, I call the studio and I get his producer. And I say, is Frank still there? And he's like, no, he's not home yet. Well, that led to the producer calling um, Caltrans and basically found out that Frank had been airlifted to USC Medical Center. So I called the hospital to find out his condition as I was waiting for my sister to pick me up. And anyways, I didn't, unfortunately, nobody had called me. So anyways, um, that's a side note, but I lay all this out in the book. Um, But yeah, my life at that point was shattered. I had like an out-of-body experience. And many of us have had that fear when your kids go off or, you know, you just get that weird feeling like, ooh, what if something happens and you kind of weird yourself out thinking about it. So I I was having that thought like, oh my gosh, I've had these thoughts before and here it is really happening. Mm-hmm. So you, you almost feel like you're hovering above yourself, watching yourself. You're going through the motions. I was trying to get myself dressed. I was ready, you know, to have my husband home watching the football game. So I'm putting on a sweater and putting on my shoes. My sister comes. We go to the hospital. Um, I find out that Frank's in very critical condition when I get there. And um, I just, my whole life was shattered in an, in an instant. Yeah, You know, Gina, I just get this picture. And um, 
you know, here I see you on the front of this putting together his baseball card. Um, yeah. I remember actually, to be, I'm going to throw this out real cute. I remember on Facebook when you were throwing out all kinds of ideas for the cover for the of the cover. book. Yeah. And the, letting us all vote what we thought would be a great <laughs> cover for the book. Yes. But let's think about that word shattered, because mm. when something is shattered, it's never put together the same. Right. It can't be. Right. I mean, you've chosen a powerful word yeah. to explain this book. Right. And I could try to take you know, I think of a mirror that's broken, and I'm going to try to put all it back in the original frame, and I'm going to glue it back in. But once something's been shattered, there's pieces missing. Yeah, there's pieces marred and scarred. Mm -hmm. And there's cracks and wounds and scar tissue, you know, yeah, and and let's go deeper into I mean, you chose Mm -hmm. again, this word for this title for this book, because when something's shattered, it will never be the same again. So Frank's not going to be walking in that door. No, he's not. Frank is not watching his grandchildren on earth be grown. He definitely is watching them from an aerial view in glory. Yes. But how do you deal with shattered? Well, that is all very painful. When I see my grandchildren, and and if any of our listeners out there have gone through the death of a spouse, you know that feeling. You constantly feel like, Frank should be here. He should be witnessing this. Yeah. Frank should be with me. I envision getting old with Frank, all of that. So not only was my life shattered and my marriage and my husband's gone, but my dreams and my vision for the future and how I saw what I saw myself doing. Yeah. And so I instantly had to try and move forward, not knowing what the future held. And that's very scary. And I think especially for us women who, I was a housewife. I was in school. I raised children. I had worked at times. But I was a housewife, and my whole life and reality were built on Frank. Yeah. So I went to counseling right away, which I think is a very wise thing to do. Um, I didn't want to fall into depression or anything. And by the way, Grief is not depression. A lot of people said that to me, like, how are you doing? How's your depression? (laughs) Grief is a very natural response to losing a loved one, especially a beloved spouse. You are going to grieve. Dogs grieve. There's a scientific method to it. And stages of grief, from what I understand, right? Yes, yes. And so one of the things that's very important to know is when a person first loses um, a significant person, and by that I mean a child, a spouse. I'm not talking about, and and I, I dare say, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but if you have a, a 95-year-old parent that passes away that lived across the country, it's going to be different than losing your spouse. Yes, okay. absolutely. So you're going to go through acute grief, and that can last anywhere from a year to two years. Mm-hmm. And so don't make the mistake, if you have a friend or you yourself are going through grief, don't make the mistake of thinking you're in depression. Mm -hmm. You're not. Mm -hmm. Now, it becomes a problem when you're not able to move forward. Perhaps you're staying in bed, you're watching television, you're drowning yourself in alcohol, Mm -hmm. you're pop, and I'm not against antidepressants, Mm -hmm. but you're taking a lot of antidepressants Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. you just don't want to feel what's going on. Then you you know that you might have a little problem or a big problem. This is good stuff. This is good. Continue to explain. I love this. There's a difference between grief and depression. It's really good. And I learned a lot when I went to counseling. For instance, I remember telling my counselor, well, a couple of people have said to me, maybe I should take an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, Gina, do you want to grieve now or do you want to grieve later? Wow, that's good. Now, she said, good answer. You know, she Mm. said, she asked me a series of questions. Are you getting up in the morning? Are you showering? Are you eating? Yes, yes, yes. Well, then you're doing fine. How should you be reacting to the loss of your husband? Mm -hmm. You should be sad. I was crying. My soul, I, I, this was subconscious, but my soul would just ache every like 15 minutes and I would cry. Right. And then it would drift. And then maybe 20 minutes later, it would happen again. That's all normal. Yes. It's all normal. Yes. So anyway, she's That's like, so just let yourself do it. Grief. And by the way, grief is work. Hmm. The first time I heard that was actually at my husband's memorial service. Hmm. Dennis Prager came. It was a high holy day for him. And he said, I'm not supposed to work today. So I'm not supposed to grieve. Wow. But he wanted to be there to do a eulogy for my husband. And I remember... Th- Thinking, yeah, 
this is going to be work. That is really good. Yeah. No, we have to sit on this a minute. Okay. Because if you don't work through your grief, it would man- maybe manifest into depression. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Eating disorders, eczema, skin rashes, alcoholism, uh, bitterness mm-hmm. can set in. Mm-hmm. I literally watched a relative who lost her spouse early on. It was very tragic. And she, I watched as a young girl, her personality changed. She was never the same. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the shattering and things being, she got put back back together, but with a lot of scar tissue. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that's where the Lord comes in and can do something miraculous. I have found pieces of my soul Mm -hmm. that... I'm sure they were there, but they were dormant. Yes. Because so much yes. of my life was wrapped around but Frank. So and good. I'm so glad it was. But I'll tell you what, too. My husband and I made a choice to have the healthiest marriage that we could have. Mm-hmm. And involved in that is being an individual mm-hmm. and not wrapping your identity in the other person. Right. Now, I have to admit that was kind of hard for me because Frank had a baseball career, then he had a, a radio career. He was very well known. So everywhere I went, you're Frank Pastore's wife. <laughs> and I, I was so proud of that. But it was kind of hard not to immerse my identity in that. That's so good. So good. But interesting in this process of finding my own self and myself without Frank on this earth, so much of Frank is in me. Mm. And that's the beauty of what marriage really is. That's good. But yet I'm an individual. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we started off our first podcast together. Again, go back if you if you didn't pick that one up. But talking about how often in a marriage or with a child, we lose our individuality. Yes. And, you know, I want to talk a little, and I want you to go into as much of the book and the story as you want, but I do want to touch on this because I'm seeing you as a different woman than I did when Frank was here. And you have evolved into, because you have done the work through the grieving, yes. through the writing, right. uh, through now your show, right. you've stepped into a leadership role that you might not have had you not gone through the Exa- crisis you did. Exactly. Is that, is that fair to say? It is fair to say. And uh, honestly, I think about this. And if God said to me, Gina, do you want Frank back or do you want to keep doing what you're doing? I'd say, give me Frank back. Yeah. <laughs> But I would be different. And we wouldn't have this story. Yes. And, and, I, and I mean that, um, you know, I, it's, I get back to that simple answers to complex questions are bound to be wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying, but sometimes it's the difficult times, not sometimes. I would almost venture to say every time in my life. Mm. It's a difficult journeys that make mm. me who I am today. Exactly. You know, we had this talk in our office the other day with a producer and our team and some of my darkest, darkest hours, we call them the dark hours of the soul, mm-hmm. are where God meets us. And shows us who he created us to be. Yeah. And we lose our identity, our worth, our calling, our destiny. Getting so busy and doing life either mm-hmm. with another mm-hmm. is sometimes crises does birth the seed that God has in us. So tell us a little bit more. Walk us through a little bit of the book. And Well, I, wanted, I just wanted to pick up on something you said. Tragedy and the hard times do make us who we are. That's when our juices really come out. But here's a key. It's looking for God in that Mm. tragedy. Mm. It's saying, Lord, what are you doing here? And I, I, and many times I feel the Lord saying to me, do you trust me? And, and I'm like, yes, Lord, I think I do. (laughs) But no, it's really seeking out God in the midst of your pain. And I write about it, um, something that's not related to death. I write about a ministry disappointment. Mm -hmm. My husband at one point worked Mm -hmm. for an organization, Christian organization, and he got big time burned. And Mm -hmm. I talk about this in the book. And I talk about how God walked us through that. Mm -hmm. And a big part of it was forgiveness, Mm -hmm. going Mm -hmm. to counseling. We didn't project our anger. We could have. I was really angry. And my husband was too. My husband said, basically, forget ministry. I'm done. I'm out. I'm up. I'm out of this game. Yeah. Right. Because Christians make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We're all human. Mm -hmm. We all have our dysfunction and all that. So we rubbed up against it. But what we did is we worked on ourselves. Mm -hmm. My husband went to counseling and worked on himself. Yeah. Yeah. He found out 
very interesting things about himself. Like, I'm attracted to some of the wrong people. Mm. And I need to not be so attracted to these kind of people Mm -hmm, anymore mm -hmm. and all that. So anyways, Mm -hmm. I get into all that in the book. But anyways. Yeah, I love that. You know, let me take a moment. We said, it was funny, I just want to tell you if you're watching and listening that Gina said to me, well, what what route are we going to go in the book? There's so much to cover. And I said, let's just let the Holy Spirit prompt us. Because I believe that we're having a dialogue, like we're sitting at a kitchen table conversing, and you have come in, and Holy Spirit's going to minister to you. So when thoughts come to me, I just kind of want to step out on them. Go Um, ahead. But you know, let's talk a little bit um, about what you just said about Frank and ministry. And I've been in ministry for 40 years. Pa- Phil and I have pastored churches for 40 sure years. Sure don't look like it, and, Pastor Tammy. Oh, I, oh, oh, <laughs> I, 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 well, believe me, I do, but that's okay. And you know what? I have wounds and scars mm-hmm. and hurts. Mm-hmm. And I remember the day, not to go into my story, I'll do it another time, when I was called into, quote, what we called full-time Christian service, as yes. though we're not all, all supposed to be that all right, the time as right. believers, whatever that term like is. Like it's just a job. You know, yeah. and, and ministry, hey, yes, I have hurt people and people have hurt me. Mm-hmm. And uh, churches have hurt me, and Christians have hurt me, and congregations have hurt me, just as you said. And I want to touch on this because we're all looking for this utopia of Christianity on earth. It's not going to happen. It, 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 Gene, it's not, not going to happen. Not in this lifetime. And, and I, I will say here at Influence Church, we have a thriving church with music and ministries right. and women of influence and all that. And, and honestly, I fit in this church like I've never fit in any church, and I'm happier than I've ever been in ministry. But I just want to speak to someone because as a pastor, I hear it all the time. I used to go to church. Yeah. I used to go yeah. to church. I was hurt by the church. I was wounded by the church. Well, welcome to the church mm-hmm. because Jesus came and died for the church because we needed redemption. And the church needs redemption. So all I just want to say to somebody who has stepped out of church and away from church and you're hurt by church, find another church. My husband says all the time, look, I've eaten at some really lousy restaurants, <laughs> but it doesn't keep me from trying others. Right. I've not stopped eating. We all eating. need food, don't I've we? I've not stopped eating. So I just right. throw that out there, a uh, sidebar, because yeah. I feel someone is using that as an excuse. And we are meant to be with the body of Christ. Right. Just like, let's segue a moment, you needed the body of Christ to minister to you during this season. Yes. And some were letters or some were calls or some were food and some were just intercessory prayers. And those are those shattered pieces. So maybe in, in our kind of concluding together here, tell us how you were ministered to you walk through the grief process, yeah. but what were some things people did that helped you get mm. through this process? Actually, just having people love me and and conveying to me and crying with me about how much they loved Frank. Mm. I can't tell you what that meant to me. Wow. And it words, I, don't worry about the words. So often we think, what do we say? It's best especially in a major tragedy, that you don't say anything. Yeah. Um, and platitudes, mm. he's in a better place. I know, don't tell me that. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. in this deep personal pain. I'm still going to struggle. It's going to hurt. I know he's in a better place. But anyways, people feel like they have to say something. That's good. That's good. No, But yeah, just surrounding the mm-hmm. family with love. If you see a need, their yard. I, I told um, your producer at lunch, my neighbor man just came and did the weeds and, and handled that for me. That meant so much. Yes. So it's just take action. Acts of service and love. Yes. Um, yes. Wow. Well, tell me um, in this in our time together, what would you want to say? Maybe speak to a woman right now who's really gone through a difficult time, and uh, she needs to pick up her shattered pieces. Yeah. Or help. You know what? Huh. Did you pick up the pieces, or did people help you pick up the pieces? Both. In the beginning, when you are totally devastated, you need people to come alongside you. I had girlfriends that would just say, "I'm coming over. Mm-hmm. We're going out for dinner, and we're going to go on a walk." This was in, you know, the first three months. People were staying the night with me. Mm-hmm. I, I again, very dependent on my husband. I didn't like staying home alone, and they knew how upset I was, so they were coming over and spending the night. And so you're wobbly, but just like a child learning to walk, um, they get their balance. Mm-hmm. And so slowly over time, mm-hmm. you kind of, mm-hmm. okay, I can do this. I had a mound, uh, any widow who or widower goes through... Um, the loss of a spouse, you have mounds of paperwork that you're doing, wow. reminders that your spouse is gone wow. and that oh. your status is changing. It's very painful. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. just said two or three things that wouldn't even go through my mind that you had to process mm-hmm. through. Yeah. 
Well, Gina, thank you. It's thank always you. an honor to have you. Your story is going to impact so many people. We're going to just share this across all of our women of ministry, uh, women of influence ministry. But um, I just feel right now in our closing that not only do I want to encourage you to get the book and to share it with someone who either has lost a loved one and needs to know how to pick up the pieces, but let me ask you right now, what pieces do you need to pick up? Gina has touched so beautifully on the fact that um, it's not necessarily depression. It could be grief. And for some of you, maybe you've been abandoned. Maybe you've lost a child. Maybe you've lost a career. There's something in your heart that's lacking and you're in pain. My friend, you have to begin to pick up the pieces and a new picture will evolve. Maybe not the one you had in mind, but the one God had in mind. God will help you pick up the pieces and he has a beautiful destiny for you, a beautiful legacy for you. Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage you to have hope. If you're struggling right now, we are a resource for you. So please reach out to us. You can email me, Tammy, at TammyHotsonPillar.com. Or you can touch base with us at womenofinfluence.today. We want to be here for you. God's moving in a mighty way with Women of Influence across the nation, and we want to partner with you. Check out what we do through Story Club, all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, of course. Follow us. We love you. We thank you for joining us. And please share this podcast with someone or this YouTube video and let others know that they too must pick up their shattered pieces. Have a great day. Thanks, Gina. Thank you. God bless.